Hello and welcome. I'm so glad to see you here. This is day four of the Clarinet Mentors Better Clarinet Tone Experience. I'm Michelle Anderson of Clarinet Mentors and I'm so glad to see you here. Today's topic is going to be all about how the gear we use affects our tone quality. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't say the most important thing to sounding good on clarinet is knowing how we want to sound and training our bodies to do the things that we can control to make a good sound. However, equipment does come into play in this, so today I want to give you, in this 15-minute training, an overview of the types of equipment that can make a difference, and this might help you decide what you want to do. So I want to start with reeds. We have to play with reeds on the clarinet, unless you have some strange, bizarre instrument that we would no longer call a clarinet. And two factors in choosing a reed that's appropriate for you. One is just to make sure you're playing on the right strength. And if you're not sure, I'll give you some really quick guidelines to it. Um, generally, when we start playing, we start on a less resistant reed, a lower strength. It might be two, two and a half, depending on how you got going. And when we outgrow that, which usually happens when we start blowing better, using better air support, having stronger embouchure muscles, the lighter reed is too wimpy to allow us to use the full fast airstream that really produces the optimum tone. A hint that your reed is too soft is it's kind of loud, a little obnoxious, and especially when you go up high, your high notes might wimp out. Um, something like this. <laughs> If you're regularly getting that undertone, although it could mean your air support's not strong enough, it also could be that your reed is not strong enough. And I always recommend you just try half strength higher and see how it goes. If your reed is too stiff, it's easier to tell. It feels really difficult and resistant, and your tone is airy and fuzzy. But expect over time, as you, if you were following this five-day training, we had a whole day on air support exercises and a whole day on embouchure. And if you're committed to making a better sound the way you want to sound and you work on those over the next few weeks, don't be surprised if you actually grow into the next size up, depending where you are in your development, especially if you're relatively new to the clarinet. And that's a good sign. It means you're getting more advanced. So once you have the right read strength, then we want to talk about what kind of read. So for everything I'm going to talk about today, reads, mouthpieces, ligatures, barrels, it's really personal preference. So what I'm gonna share with you are some guidelines in picking stuff out, but I really encourage you to test and try out some of the different things I'm showing you and pick what works for you. I'm not gonna tell you what's the best because it might not be the best for you. There are many kinds of good reads and there are many reads that are not so good. So if you have not experimented with a better quality read, I highly encourage you to do so. I have some here that I like, that I recommend, that I encourage you to try in no particular order. The Silverstein Alta. Really cool thing about this, it's the first read company that came out with kind of like a warranty. If you get bad reads, they'll replace them for you. Really interesting. And they're good quality, sound great for a lot of people. Um, the cane read that works best for me is by Stoyer and the exclusive reads. A lot of my students really like it. But again, it's just what works well for me and my mouth. Um, I also like the Van Doren V12 and uh, Peter Luthier reads. A lot of people really like the Rico Reserve reads and get great results on those. Um, now, more and more of late, I've been working with the Legere European Cut read and it's a synthetic reed that lasts for a very long time. Um, when I first started playing on the synthetic reeds, I didn't find I was able to get the same warmth and color that I found in my cane reeds. And someone recommended to me that I just commit to it for a month, no cane at all. And I did that and I found that somehow, I'm not sure what I did, I changed how I was playing to make them sound the way I want. And now I don't have the frustration of warped reeds and reeds that don't come out of the package way different than they were the day before, which sometimes happens with cane reeds. So if you haven't experimented with it, I like the Legere European Cut. It's worth a try. Definitely worth a try. So those are some of the reeds that a lot of people like and enjoy. I know there's other ones out there and feel free to put in comments if there's something else that you really like because sharing your knowledge will help everyone here in our clarinet mentors community. All right, I'm gonna jump to mouthpieces. I already said on day one that I think probably the first piece of gear you should upgrade is your mouthpiece. If you're playing on kind of a beginner level instrument, 
The mouthpiece makes such a difference to how easy it feels to play clarinet, for the sound to come out, and also for the sound that actually comes out of the instrument. And everyone's face is shaped so differently, the best thing to do is try a bunch of mouthpieces. There are many mouthpiece manufacturers that will send you a sample pack and let you pick through and find the one that you like and then you mail back the rest. If you're lucky enough to live near you know, a relatively large clarinet store, go in and try them. Um, it, you'll know pretty quickly which one works for you. If you don't, if you're just somewhere where you have no music store anywhere in the vicinity and you can't find a place that will send you samples, try one of the reliable brands. I'll give you some guidelines. Again, there's so many great mouthpiece makers out there. I know I'm leaving some out, but kind of the next step up above plastic, there's some intermediate ones by Yamaha, Clark Phobes. Really, I'd encourage you to go even to the sort of $100 to $150 range, which brings in many great ones. Van Doren makes some great ones. Daddario makes some great ones. Uh, BG. There's some really nice ones by Lavecchio. It's um, Bob who makes them in California. And then a level above that are all of the people who are craftsmen who really specialize in, in tweaking professional level mouthpieces. And there's so many fine ones. Um, Bakun, uh, Brad Bain, Greg Smith, Michael Lomax, Clark Phobes, and lots more that I apologize if I'm forgetting off the top of my head. But I would say if you have not tried to step up mouthpiece, I highly encourage you to do so. It will really, really impact your playing in a positive way. Try them out. Sit down with a tuner. When you try them, try tonguing, play low notes, play high notes, so you get a sense of how it feels and how it responds. Go into your mouthpiece testing with reeds that are a little bit lighter and reeds that are a bit more resistant. Different openings on the mouthpiece cut will make a reed feel softer or stiffer. So you want to have the flexibility to try the mouthpiece on a reed that really suits that mouthpiece. All right, ligatures. There are so many different kinds of ligatures and many good ones. And again, test. I don't think they make as much difference as the mouthpiece. It's, it's more like the final finishing touch on your tone to make it just a bit more resonant. Um, I play on the Silverstein ligature. I love it. It is kind of, you know, the Rolls Royce of the ligature world, and it, and it may be uh, an expense that isn't worth it to you, but hey, if you want to, I really love it. There are other ligatures I love too. I absolutely love the ligatures that come out from BG, both their um, duo and their traditional. The traditional is a really good medium level one that a lot of my students love. And then there are ligatures that are made out of leather or rubber. This BG or Rovner makes a lot like that. Um, uh, there's, this is an old Van Doren inverted ligature. Van Doren has a very fine ligature that has different kind of inserts you can put on to create different kinds of sounds that a lot of my colleagues really like. I know I'm missing out. The basic principle in a step up ligature is basically they put less weight on the reed so that it can vibrate more. And more vibration generally gives us a more resonant, warmer sound. And yet they still have to hold it in place. So all these different designs are really designed to let the reed vibrate more, but still play reliably. And test out what you like. It's nice to have a better ligature if you can. All right, I'm gonna talk about barrels. Right, this piece right below our mouthpiece. When I first was recommended to me to try a different barrel. I remember thinking, well, it's just like a little tube. Can it really make that much of a difference? The answer is yes, it really can on many levels. If you have an excellent professional clarinet, I have a really lovely Bakun clarinet here, the barrel just adds something extra. And, and there are different kinds of wood, different shapes. Um, you can see here, I have two barrels that are different very different cuts and they both produce a slightly different kind of sound and I actually use different barrels for different occasions if I'm playing chamber music in a small group I might want one that's not quite so loud to want to drown out the poor string player but that has a beautiful you know beautiful chamber music sound if I'm in a big orchestra and a very powerful piece and I want to project to the back of the hall I might use a different one different kind of woods produce different sound look at this beautiful one this is for my e-flat clarinet but tulip wood works great on the E-flat clarinet. So the barrels will do three things for you. 
Um, well, maybe I'll just say two. They change the timbre, which is the quality of your sound. Some barrels will be brighter, some will be darker, but also because they come in so many different lengths, you can really hone in on playing in tune better. If you're someone who always plays sharp on your basic setup, getting one of these more um, fancier barrels will let you buy a longer one or a shorter one if you're always flat. So you can really hone in on the exact length that fits best for how you play in your setup. There are many people who make good barrels. I happen to live really close to the Bakun factory. I'm a Bakun artist, so I love Bakun barrels, but I know there are many, many other good ones out there. So what I will say about a wooden barrel, if you have a plastic clarinet and it's not quite in your budget to upgrade to a wooden clarinet at this time, the advantage of being a wooden clarinet can give you a warmer, more resonant sound. Putting a wooden barrel on a plastic clarinet is about half of the tone of the wooden clarinet. It dramatically upgrades the tone of a plastic instrument. I've had students do that. I had one student who was, um, had played clarinet a lot and then gone off professionally and done many other things for about 15 years. And she wanted to be a music therapist. She had to do well enough on a clarinet audition to get into music school to get her music therapy degree. And she had a plastic Yamaha clarinet, which is a good um, student level clarinet. We put an intermediate bakun wooden barrel on and she sounded amazing. And I sort of said to her, you know, for what you're playing, you're not going to be a professional player. You just want to sound really good. I think this is going to do it. And she dazzled people at the audition. So something to consider as a possible upgrade. All right, gosh, time flies. We're almost near the end of our 15 minutes. What I do want to do is just quickly talk about the full clarinet. There, as I just alluded to earlier, there are many levels of clarinets. There's your basic beginner model, which most are made out of plastic. As you go to an intermediate level, most of them are made out of wood, and it will give you a fuller, richer sound. Aside from that, the, the mechanisms and the keyworks tends to be a little more elegant and soft and durable. By soft, I mean light, where, where it's easier to move your fingers around, and just some refinements to it. But mostly, it's, it's in sound and pitch. And you know, they can go anywhere from a good intermediate one around the $1,100 to $1,500 range up to, to the $12,000 clarinet. There's lots out there. You know, get the fancy gold-plated keys. They're gorgeous. Um, you need to decide what works for you. But when you decide to try clarinets, even if you found five clarinets with exactly the same manufacturer, the same model number, every piece of wood resonates differently. So if you can, try them out. Go into a, a dealer that has many clarinets and play them and see which one gives you the sound that you find beautiful. That's, in fact, that's going to be the theme of tomorrow's session. What is the sound that you find beautiful and how do we, how do we really hone in on that? Like It's like a map where here's our destination and we're wandering towards our own concept of beautiful sound. We're going to talk about that in tomorrow's session. If you're not a member of the Clarinet Mentors community, learnclarinetnow.com. We'll just let you know whenever I'm doing free clarinet stuff. And if you want more tone-related lessons from me, betterclarinettone.com. We'll give you some preview lessons from a more extensive course I have. It's so great having you here. Thank you so much. We're at the end of our 15 minutes. Love having you here. Tomorrow I'm live again a few hours later, 5 o'clock Pacific. Looking forward to seeing you then. Thank you so much, everybody. It's awesome having you in my community. And keep practicing and send me your questions, michelle at clarinetmentors.com for Sunday. Bye.